Hey there, Chad here for the AI Content Dojo, and this is Advanced Shortly AI, a new feature called Granular Controls for basically controlling the GPT-3 AI output. Take a look at this command, slash instruct. You probably know what this is if you've seen any of my other videos or the recent few, uh, but this control, you might notice something a little bit different. Did you catch those plus signs at the end of it? What the heck are those things? Well, they're part of a new advanced feature in Shortly AI that I like to call the granular AI controls. There's no official name for it, I guess, but what the heck, let's put a name on it. Let's call it granular AI controls. And they're gonna give you some unique capabilities to get pretty much what you want from the AI, which is always a good thing, right? So we're gonna go through what weighted output controls mean. Uh, why is this even needed? The difference between the minuses and pluses, and and how other and, and how you can use these uh, in your, I guess, in your writing. So, weighted output control. This so this new feature basically gives you a way to kind of control the output when you use the slash instruct command. Um, a minus means that you want to see less of a word in the output. So you might write. You know, instruct, write a poem about cherry blossoms blooming in Tokyo, minus Ueno. And that would mean that you want a poem about cherry blossoms blooming in Tokyo, of course. But maybe, you know, don't include the word Ueno, which is a part of Tokyo, by the way. And the opposite is also true. If you use a plus instead, it's like instruct, write a poem about cherry blossoms blooming in Tokyo, plus Ueno then that means that you want the AI to maybe add a little bit of extra consideration to use the word Ueno in the output. And I call it weighted because you can use more than one plus or more than one minus. For example, plus plus Ueno or minus minus Ueno if you would really rather not have that word used uh, or you would really want it used. And you can go up to three each. For instance, you might do something like write an accomplishment about winning first place in a local IT hackathon, plus, plus, plus security, which would mean that you really, really strongly want the word security to appear in the output. Now, I think you can kind of see where this is going. You can use this in a lot of ways. Um, basically, when you want to inform the instructor command of certain output that you want, you can start doing some pretty... I guess flexible things with it. So why are these needed? Well, there's going to be times when, you know, you want something in particular from the AI, of course, or there's going to be times that the AI will keep on giving you something that you're not really, you know, it's, it's, it's not necessarily bad content, but it doesn't really fit with what you're writing at the moment. And you just kind of, maybe you're, you're a little bit stuck, you know, the AI keeps on, you know, maybe sort of misinterpreting what you really want next. And uh, so you can use this to kind of fine tune your way out of that trap and continue on with your writing. I mean, ultimately in the end, it kind of just means that you're gonna have higher quality content because you know, you're actually getting what you want instead of uh, kind of settling maybe if the AI produces something good enough that you know you're gonna edit later. Or there could be times when you're gonna use like a really broad topic in your in your command and you, but, but, you know, with all the different things that could be a part of that topic, you want the AI to return something that's maybe focused a little bit more on a specific part of it. And that would be one way that you could use it. All in all, it's just kind of another way that you can, you know, make use of the AI in shortly to help you get your work done faster. Okay, I know that in this screen, it kind of looks like it's a long dash up here. Uh, it's actually, it just sort of blurs together because of the spacing. It's actually three minuses. So three minuses is different than three pluses. Um, so this is something you need to keep in mind. It's a little bit different, you know, essentially you're adding weight, right? You know, one, like if you have over here, minus the keyword, if with one minus, you know, you're kind of saying like, I'd rather you didn't use this keyword, you know, maybe two minuses, would be a little bit stronger. Like, you know, please don't use this keyword. And three means absolutely do not use this keyword when you bring me some results. It's a little bit different though than the plus. See plus, yeah, if you could maybe include the, include this word, two pluses would mean please, 
you know, a little more sternly, please use this word. And triple plus is please really try your best to use this word. You notice that it's not, you will absolutely use this word because, um, well, you might run into the situation, whatever your, your, your request is, whatever you're asking for. Uh, there just might be a situation where the AI just is not able to produce the output with that word in it. So the, tri the triple minus and the triple plus, just a little bit different. Triple minus meaning you absolutely won't see that word in the output. Triple plus means you probably will, but there is a chance that you won't. If it can't make up a phrase or, or bring back results for you. Uh, so don't use these things in line, these granular controls. Um, one of the things that I found out during testing is that it's, it's meant to add keywords after your ask, after your request. So don't do something like this, write a poem about cherry blossoms blooming in Tokyo, where I use plus, plus, plus Tokyo. Um, essentially this would look like what you're asking for. And well, there's no Tokyo. Right. And so that's going to kind of, you know, mess up the uh, request. It's not going to work very well. Um, I mean, honestly, there's really no need for the triple pluses there anyways, but the right way to do it would to just be make sure that the word Tokyo appears there first and that so that your request looks like this. And then you have the keyword saying, you know, please really, I really, really want to see Tokyo in the output. I mean, chances are you're going to see that anyways, but you can do it. Uh, you can also chain multiple keywords together. And so, you know, I know what you're thinking. You're like seeing all this cool feature. You're like, ooh, ooh. you have a question. Can you use more than one? And yeah, of course you can. So you would write something like instruct, write an answer target for how much voltage do electric eels produce? And I want to see Germany aquarium in it. I don't want to see ocean. And this is what the AI gave me. This can vary between species, but electric eels are known to produce enough volts and amps to cause involuntary muscle contractions and therefore paralysis in prey that can uh, that they can then feed on. An aquarium in Germany <laughs> record, recorded an electric eel shocking a carp with 600 volts, which is enough electricity to power 10 normal U.S. homes for one hour. I would say that's pretty good, right? It used Germany used aquarium, did not use ocean, came out fantastic. And you can imagine that if I didn't want other parts, I could go back, rerun the command with new or changed keywords and different weights, how I wanted to, you know, sort of shape the output to meet what I want. So in summary, you know, just try out the controls. You don't have, you know, credit limits to worry about. So you can experiment, you know, especially when you're getting back the results that aren't quite what you want me, you know, go through there and make some minus keywords, you know, that kind of take away from the output that you're seeing that you don't want. And I'll show this in just a moment too. But, um, remember too, that these granular controls are only within the instruct command, not in the article brief or otherwise. So may you have the best, most efficient and comfortable writing experience because shortly is bringing you all these amazing features. Let's go ahead and hop over into shortly here real quick. And let's take a peek here. Let me zoom in so you can see this. So let's just run a few commands, right? Write an accomplishment about leading a support team to save the company money. Uh, if I run this, I'm gonna get back something about just leading a sales team, right? You know, not too bad, but like, was my sales team about something in particular? Here's the next one where I added IT. You know, it's a sales, I, let us, I mean a support team, sorry. I let a support team, you know, to save the company money in the IT department maybe. When we run that, we should get some IT stuff. Oh no, it <laughs> see, this is something that can happen too in these, in these AI tools. They totally blow up on you, don't they? Okay, and it's not even giving me IT. So remember I told you that it, it could potentially not give you the plus words, even if you strongly, strongly want it, um, which is 
I, I think in this case, it may be a little bit weird, and I'm going to probably provide feedback to the uh, writers or the developers of shortly about this. You know, brand new feature, what the heck, I'll give them some leeway. And it looks like, it, okay, so with new IT processes. Okay, anyways, I'll give them some feedback on that one. Um, instruct, write a poem about cherry blossoms blooming in Tokyo. Let's run that one. Let's see what we get. Oh, you know what? I think, let me go back. I think I know what happened. Uh, we probably have, we have the context getting in the way. So let me, let me make sure that, you know, for, so I don't forget in the future here, let's just make sure that the context is cut off for all of these. Okay. Now let's see what happens with the pluses. Let's just still do the same thing. Okay. Better, much better. <laughs> Scared me there for a moment, right? Um, okay, so now let's go back to the poem again. Get some cherry blossom poem. It is cherry blossom season in Tokyo right now. <laughs> As they dance in the air. They actually kind of do dance in the air. If you've ever seen cherry blossoms when they start to, to fall off the trees, it, it is kind of a dance. And, and after a while, when they really start falling, it's almost like it's snowing outside again. Uh, let's go ahead and add Ueno. And when I'm adding Ueno, I'm doing that because I know that in Ueno, there are a ton of cherry blossoms. There's got to be something that can be said about that. Let's see if it adds Ueno. Okay. Neat. Uh, oh, we've got a chance to rate it. Let's just say that maybe that I feel like for a poem, this is maybe cheating a little bit. So let's just say it's good. Not very good, but good. Uh, okay, write an answer target for how much voltage do electric eels produce? Let's see if we get back, I mean, we should get back a different result than what we saw in the uh, website or in the AI content, AI content dojo site. Yep, there we go. Um, it didn't, it didn't use Germany and stuff like that, but I didn't really strongly suggest it, did I? So, uh, it would be one of those things you can keep on going. So, let me, let me use this one as an example. You see how it has like the Amazon River Basin and other parts. Let me, let me see if I undo this and let me take away uh, Amazon. And let's strongly suggest it doesn't use Amazon. Let's see what happens. Maybe we'll come up with some more feedback for shortly, won't we? Yeah, there we go. So it didn't use Amazon, but it also didn't use Germany. So I'll say that that's actually pretty good, but it... It can be better, so let's undo that. And let's see if we can get it to use Germany with if we add another plus here. I have a feeling that it's not, but let's let's just push aquarium in Germany a little harder and less and, and still no Amazon. Oof. Wow. Okay. So you know this will be good feedback for the shortly team anyways. Okay. Well, it is what it is, right? Let's just say it's good, but not, well, you know what? Hmm. I mean, it's technically good copy. So I'll, just, I'll just say good. Okay, fine. Let's move on. <laughs> uh, write a witty introduction. So this is not something that shortly is really all that great at. And this is just a, I'm just a throwaway experiment. Write a witty introduction to an article about the new granular controls of shortly. One problem here for sure is that these granular controls are shortly AI. I, mean, I almost guarantee you that GPT-3 is completely unaware of this. Um, and that's why I put in here too that it's the best GPT-3 based AI writing tool in the market because I don't want, or I need to inform the, the AI of what is shortly AI. There's a darn good chance that there's no training in the, the, the main GPT-3 AI memory the brain about what shortly AI is because it's newer than the last time it was trained. So I tell it what it is. I say, write a witty introduction. It's probably not going to do a good job, um, but it's experiment time. So let's just see what happens. I just really want to show this off because, you know, you, you really should be, um, I just repeated some things. You really should be kind of experimenting, right? To kind of find where your limits are and what you become comfortable with when you're using this tool. That's pretty good. I kind of dig that one. So bravo. 
surely yeah, I did did a not too bad job on that one. But my point is, is that, you know, spend some time experimenting and just putting in, if you consider it wacky or not, just put in some ideas and just see how much you can stretch, you know, your basically your creativity with using these different commands and just what you can get from them. And over time, you'll know, you'll start to get this feel for what will probably produce something and what won't. And then you can start using these granular controls to kind of influence the, what you'll get back from the AI. Um, as you can see, they're not, it's not, it's not a, a perfect science, right? It's still an AI, it's still like a, an artificial brain that's still its own sort of, you know, it's, it's its own kind of entity in a, in a sense. It's, it's thinking for itself. So it doesn't necessarily always follow your rules exactly or your requests precisely, do they? I think you've probably already seen that. And no, no matter what AI tool you're using out there right now, there's going to be some wacky returns. But I think right now, with especially with this granular control, shortly AI is the one that you can get the best results from, the fastest, and all in one document, you know, for you to, to just work fast and produce, especially long form content. Uh, and I know there's a big focus on shortly AI to um, help story writers too. It's not only for article writers like what I'm using it for and what I'm what I'm teaching. I guess I'm not really much of a creative writer, so I'm not really a storyteller, so to speak. But if you're if you are and you use shortly AI for that and you've listened to this far into the video, um, please drop a comment. Let me know how shortly AI works for you. I know that. Um, they mentioned to me, uh, the developers mentioned to me that these granular controls um, in some ways are really meant for the storytellers too, because it gives you a way to maybe introduce characters and things like that into your requests from the AI so that you can get back results to kind of continue your story for you and such. But um, I'm also interested if you're an article writer um, in the comments, you know, maybe let me know what experiments you've tried and what the results were. I'm kind of interested and uh, it would help me provide feedback to shortly to, you know, make everything better too. And uh, that's it for this guide. I hope you found it helpful. If you like what I do, please consider subscribing and uh, going over to the AI Content Dojo and joining the mailing list. It's completely free and I don't spam you. Don't try and bother you too much. It, it, all the emails are actually written by me by hand. There's no automation that just kicks out stuff to you all, all the time on them. You know, that you just don't want to hear. You don't, you don't want that, right? You don't want automated emails. I write every single one of them. So, uh, and that's everything. So take care, happy writing. And until uh, next time, see ya.